So we've learned now how DNS policies work and how they can be configured. What we're going to do in this walkthrough lab is just quickly run through creating a policy so that you can actually see that in action. So with access to the Cisco umbrella dashboard, we want to navigate to policies. Under management, we want to select DNS policies. We have the default policy configured and that cannot be deleted, but can be modified somewhat. What we want to do, however, is want to create a new policy on top of that default policy. So we'll just click add. And on the first step, we can see now we have a list of options that we can select or deselect in regards to what sort of protection we are looking for with this specific policy. So you can see we've got the access policy broken down into uh, content category, destination lists, application control. We've got the blocking threats. So we're looking at security categories and the file analysis with Cisco AMP. Under advanced, we have the intelligent proxy settings, including the SSL decryption, the safe search, and we have the allow only mode along with the login as well that we can configure as well. So we'll just select what we want here and we'll just leave all these selected just for the purpose of this lab walkthrough. So we can actually walk through all the settings that we've already discussed. Now, when it comes to what we want to protect in terms of identities, we have a number of options that we can use depending on what's configured. So we'll stick now actually with the network because that's what we've configured so far in this lab. So we'll configure our lab network. We'll say next. And now we get to the security category sec section. So we have the default settings already set here. So you can see that we have the malware security category selected, the command and control callbacks and phishing attacks as well. So if we wanted to change that, we can either edit that as a default or we could add a new setting here and give that a new name. We'll just stick with the default for now and we'll leave the default settings there on. So we've got malware, command and control and phishing attacks. Integrations, we also have our SecureX uh, integration there, but we're not going to focus on that in this particular lab walkthrough. So we'll just say next on that, sticking with the default. And now we get to the content access. So it's allowing us to now select what content categories we want to block. So we have the defaults, high, moderate, low, and custom. Custom allows us to create our own content categories in terms of what we want to block from the available categories. So you can see we've got a huge list here that we can select from. So that's really good if you want to really get granular in terms of the sort of things you're looking to block. But in most cases, we could probably look at using low, moderate or high, depending on the organization. So we're just going to say, let's block high. So we're going to block adult illegal activity, social networking and file sharing websites. So if you have an organization where you don't want to allow things such as social networks, obviously illegal activity, including adult material and file sharing, then we can, all, we can, this, this high option is the option for you. If you want parts of that, so not all of it. So for instance, you wanted to block everything apart from uh, social networking in this particular field, then we could always create that custom um, content access. So once we selected that, we'll just say next now. And now we get to applications. So we, we have the ability to now look at and select the applications we'd like to block or allow. So if it was to, again, we've got the default settings here. So we can see that we have add publishing. If we click into this, we can see that all these are set to block in terms of applications. We could, we could choose to create a new setting if we wanted to. Oh, we could modify the existing one here by just selecting these little radio boxes here. And if you wanted to say maybe not block, let's say for instance, all business intelligence applications, we could actually go into that and we could say, okay, let's just maybe block 
app C, for instance. And then there you go, you can see it's default set to block, or you can change it to allow, and then on the flip side, block the rest that you don't want as well. So you can get really granular in that sense. The other one we have selected here in terms of applications at the moment is ads, so anything related to ads. So we'll just leave this set as it is for now. Again, as we get through the course, we'll probably focus a little bit more on creating specific policies or more specific policies so that we can actually see the behavior of how Umbrella works with these policies. But just for now, with this lab walkthrough, we're just focusing on the actual policy creation itself. So now we get on to destination list. So this allows us to block or allow again based on destination lists for uh, this particular policy. So you can see that we have a global allow list and we also have a global block list as well. We can add a new list if we choose to do so. If we click new list here, you can see we can give it a, a list name here and we can see we're going to block or allow. So we've got the option there and you can see there we can add the domain or URL there in terms of what we want to uh, block. You can also upload uh, lists as well if you already have lists from maybe other intelligent sources or other platforms you can upload them here as well so that's very useful i already have a few that's in my block list just based on some fishing stuff that i've been looking at so i'll leave those in there we don't have any in the allow so we'll just click next on that one and now we get to file analysis. So this is advanced malware protection. So this is looking at inspecting files that Umbrella sees for malicious behavior. And it's also going to look at the files to see what sort of reputation that they have, providing they have one already. And then based on that, with this setting set, we can actually block any sort of malicious files. So we'll leave that one turned on and we'll just say next now. And then when we actually get or users get to a page or try to access something that is blocked, we're going to present them with a block page to show them or to let them know that whatever they've tried to access is not allowed and it's blocked. So we can use the default umbrella appearance, the block page, and we can preview that if you want, or we can actually use a custom appearance which allows you to create a custom block page as well or if you don't want to use the default appearance uh, or block page you can choose to use a custom one and you can create a custom one as well we also have the ability to add users that should be able to bypass the block page and we also have the ability to create bypass codes uh, for that um, for that bypassing behavior from uh, those users as well. We'll leave this as Umbrella's default appearance and then we'll click next and here we can see now we've reached the end of the configuration for this specific policy and now we can give it a name so we can give it a name that meaningful to us or the organization if you've got some sort of naming convention that you need to follow and you can also view all the things that you've modified with regards to that policy as well. And if you want to change anything, make any sort of changes, if you've made a mistake and you can see uh, that you made a mistake in a specific area or want to change a specific area, you can actually just click edit under each one of these rather than going through the whole policy wizard again. So it really helps to save time there as well. And then if you're happy with that on the summary page, we can just go ahead and we can press save now. And there you have it. So now we have a new policy above the default policy. So that's a quick lab walkthrough of the DNS policy creation, some of the things that we can configure based on what we've just learned in this lesson. I'll see you in the next lesson.